Hey everyone, Cole Caparoon here. I have been getting a bunch of messages since I posted my last video about the Mac Studio asking if I've continued to have any problems, if there are any problems, what my experience has been, and there are a couple issues that I've been having. So this video does not have a sponsor, but this video is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want in-depth mix tutorials, there'll be a link in the description to my Patreon and links in the description for all the gear that I use. If you use those links, it helps support the channel. I really appreciate it. Okay, the first and biggest issue that I've been having uh, with this Mac Studio is it seems to be picky with hard drives, which is a very interesting thing to me. So, um, I have these uh, SanDisk solid state hard drives that I've been using for a while. I have two of them. I have a video, one that I use for video, for editing video, and one that I use as my work drive uh, in Pro Tools. It runs fine off of these for editing video or for just any general file storage or file transfers. These have been great. But for some reason, uh, Pro Tools will not record to, this, to these drives. Now I can mix from these drives. I can run sessions from these drives. It, the playback works just fine. But as soon as I hit record, I get an error in one second flat 100% of the time. So I'm not sure if this is a Pro Tools thing or if it's a Pro Tools through Rosetta thing or if it's uh, a issue with the Mac Studio and these hard drives or I'm kind of unsure of where the problem actually lies, but it has been picky on hard drives. Now, the workaround that I've had since I have the one terabyte Mac Studio, I've just been putting the song folders or the artist folder on the desktop and just running to the internal hard drive because that seems to work just fine. It also works just fine going to my old G drives, uh, the regular uh, physical hard drives that are not solid state drives. It records fine to those, just the performance is a little slower because they're not solid state drives. That's a peculiar one to me and uh, one of the most surprising issues that I've had with this Mac Studio. Now there are a couple more issues that I've been having uh, the first time I load a plugin in Pro Tools, I do, again don't know if this is a Pro Tools specific thing, but oftentimes when it's a fresh session and it's the first instance of something, for instance, uh, I open up the Brainworks SSL channel and the first instance of it, the first time I open it, I get the beach ball. Um, and sometimes it can last for a minute. Now every time after that, when I put another SSL channel on a different track, it's instant and it's fast and it's snappy. But the first instance of a good percentage of the plugins that I use is, uh, it's, a, it's a weird one. So I'm, I'm not sure if that's a licensing thing, maybe it's an iLock thing, but there's some weird thing going on there too. The next issue that I've been having is with my Magic Mouse. Now this is, the generation one magic mouse, the one with the batteries, uh, not the chargeable one. And the, so the new magic mouse actually has a USB charger on the bottom of it. Who, look, I'm, I'm an Apple guy. I love Apple products, but what bright eyed, bushy tailed engineer over there decided that, you know what you should do to be able to charge this? You should have to turn it upside down to be able to, that's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Anyway, so I've been avoiding upgrading my Magic Mouse because I don't want the rechargeable one with the USB cable on the bottom. However, this old version, it seems to have some connectivity issues. It's not very reliable. The connection is not very reliable and it will disconnect uh, kind of randomly. Not every day, um, not all the time, but it disconnects halfway often. The people at the Apple store here in Nashville have assured me that the new Magic Mouse will fix that. However, I just, man, I don't want to deal with that. And I am, I am 100% sold on the Magic Mouse. I'm not a fan of trackballs. I, I think this is such a great workflow. This is a side note. The reason why I love the Magic Mouse is to be able to like fly between between edges of the session. So I can swipe once and be from one side to the other, no matter how many tracks there is. So switching, like scrolling top to bottom on the edit window or scrolling side to side on the mix window, uh, to me, the Magic Mouse just has that on lock. And that's why I use it. That's why I continue to use it. Anyway, connectivity on the Magic Mouse, 
another interesting odd issue I've been having. Now I did have a bunch of people ask about the fan volume on the Mac Studio. Uh, let's see if we can see this here if I zoom all the way in. It's, my Mac Studio is, it's right there. It's, well, yeah, you can't hardly see it. It's right there behind this white monitor. And so it's certainly close enough that occasionally I can hear the fan. I haven't had any issues. I've recorded some really soft acoustic guitar and I haven't had any issues uh, being able to hear it in the recording. And I will say that I'm very picky about this. My room is very quiet here. And I haven't had any issues with it. But if you put your head, if you're sitting next to it, uh, and and the fan kicks on you you it is audible it just hasn't caused me an issue so after a few months of running the Mac Studio all day every day my primary computer not just for audio production but also for the video side of things should you upgrade should you consider this um, yes I think yes uh, it's not a resounding yes it's not a buy it right now because I do have a couple issues and I'm unsure of of what the cause of these issues are. However, it has been very stable. Pro Tools is very stable. I'm getting zero crashes outside of the weird hard drive error. Uh, I'm getting zero crashes and zero errors. It's been very stable and reliable. If you do anything besides just audio production, the speed and power is really evident when it comes to like offline bounces. It is stupid fast when it comes to like offline bounces or importing tracks. It, you know, a lot of times someone will send me a song to mix and there might be a hundred tracks in it. And so importing those tracks into a fresh Pro Tools session it's really, really fast and completely blows away my old my old Mac Pro. So any sort of like data file transfer stuff is, is crazy fast. I love that it has an SD card reader on the front of it. It also has insane power as I demonstrated in my first video about it for video editing. Video and photo editing, it's like, it's a stunning machine. I, I cannot highly enough recommend it when it comes to that kind of stuff. For audio production, I think it's great. Uh, it's certainly a big step up from what I was using. It's not mind blowing in the audio department, but I think that's also because computers have been powerful enough for quite a while now. I mean, we've been kind of past the computing CPU uh, ability for a while now, I think, or at least I haven't felt that in a while. So anyway, Great computer, are a couple issues with it. I just wanted to throw out an update here after a few months of use, and I hope it helps somebody. As always, I always hope all these videos help someone, even if it helps one person. If I can make a video and it helps just one person spend money the right way or have an easier time or make better music, then that's what I want to do. I guess that's it. Okay, we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. <laughs>